Today I'm going to talk a little bit about advanced filters, uh, which if you read my search engine land post on them, uh, you can see that here and I'll provide a link to it in my blog post. I absolutely fell in love with advanced filters as soon as I discovered them, and I really do think that they are an amazing alternative to uh, regex, also called regular expressions. And I never understood why Excel didn't include regular expressions because you can use regex in Microsoft Word but not Excel. But now I understand. I think Microsoft has done a terrible job marketing it though. Anyway, what I decided to do was create a video using a real live client project. So this client came to me. It looks like I'm doing SEO for the mafia, uh, but I'm not. Uh, however, they do work with crime cleanup scenes and stuff. But they came to me with a list of keywords that they're bidding on uh, for PPC. And what they wanted me to do, part of what they wanted me to do overall, what they wanted me to do is create a dashboard for them. But one of the projects within that dashboard project was they wanted me to group all of the keywords into intuitive categories and then separate out uh, the keyword volume and, and competition uh, by category so they could monitor that. And then I put all of that into a pivot chart where you can choose the different keywords from a report filter and the chart updates automatically. So it was super sexy. But what I started with initially was just a list here of the keywords, the competitions, and the search volumes uh, brought in from the Google AdWords keyword tool. So the first thing you're going to do uh, to use the advanced filter is just click anywhere inside the data set and on a Mac uh, go to data and then under filter here, under the sort and filter group, uh, just click that drop down menu and choose advanced filter. Now because I already created some advanced filters, as some of my options are already chosen for me. But what Excel will do is as long as there's nothing along the outside perimeter, so you have empty cells separating your data set, it will automatically detect uh, the outer range of the, the data set and choose that for you. What I almost always do is copy to another location. So I choose that first. And if you don't remember to do that, then you're going to have a bit of a mess because it's going to filter in place. Okay, so uh, if it doesn't select the filter set, then just select the picker here and usually what I'll do is I'll just select like the first row or first couple rows and then press command shift down arrow control shift down arrow on the PC and that automatically selects um, my entire table okay next what you need is the criteria range so let me back out of this and explain something so the way that advanced filters work is let me go back up to the top here. I'm just going to do control up arrow to get to the top. So the way that it works is you use these criteria ranges up here and I have some that I've already uh, created and I actually deleted them for the purpose of the video. And what you do with the cr criteria range is the first thing is you want to have uh, the heading that is used in the uh, in the data set. So if you want to filter by keyword, then you would either type keyword in here or you can just reference that cell, however you want to do it. And then you want to decide what do I want included. So we're going to start with a simple one. So the first, the first thing was uh, I decided to um, go for the keyword scene because a lot of these keywords included scene. So the way you do that is a little trickier with something you want to include because you need to use the equal sign, but the equal sign is uh, an indicator of a formula. So you can't just put an equal sign in there or Excel will think you're uh, putting either a formula or some kind of function or referencing another cell like we did with keyword. So what you have to do is do something that turns that into text so that Excel doesn't get all schizo thinking that it's a function. So 
the Microsoft site has a super weird way to do that that's way overly complicated. What I did was I just used the single quotation mark because the single quotation mark will turn anything into text. So even if I put the number 1000, which is a number, you can see that by putting that single quotation mark in front of it, Excel treats it as text and it's left aligned instead of right aligned. Uh, so we're going to use that to get the equal sign so that you have to have the equal sign in the cell without it trying to process a function or a formula. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put that, that single quotation mark and then an equal sign and then you can use these wildcard characters, namely uh, the asterisk or the question mark, uh, to tell Excel, you know what, there can be anything before this word or anything after it, and the way that you do that is with the asterisk. So that's kind of like the um, dot asterisk in regex. So this just says there may or may not be another character. So there doesn't have to be. If you use a question mark, then there has to be another character, and there can only be one. With the asterisk, you're saying there may be a character. There might not. It might start with the word I'm about to type in, uh, or there may be multiple characters. So it gives you a lot of latitude. So I'm just going to put in scene, and then I'm going to put another asterisk. So that just tells Excel there can be anything, uh, and then there has to be the word scene, and then there can be anything after it. And then we're just going to press enter to put that in there. Now, one thing to also keep in mind, and I always have to double think this, is when you're dealing with filters, because this isn't a formula, you don't have to put text in quotation marks. And as far as I know, this is the only time you don't have to wrap text in quotation marks. So in any kind of function or formula, which a formula is just a combination of functions, uh, you always have to put text in quotation marks. With this, you don't want to put quotation marks in there, or you're going to tell Excel there has to be a quotation mark. Okay, so that's going to be our criteria. So when it asks for the criteria range, we have to select uh, the heading that we've written here, and we have to select whatever, uh, whatever the test is here, or the requirement, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so we're going to go back into Filter, Advanced Filter. It's already selected our range for us. Uh, we want to copy to a, a new location, and for the criteria range, I'm going to go back here, and we're going to select these two cells, only these two cells. If you select an extra cell by accident, it's going to include everything, because it basically tells Excel anything goes. So there's no sense having an advanced filter, obviously. So we're going to select those two cells. And again, if you want to learn more, check out my blog post on the Search Engine Land site. Like I said, I'll include a link to it in my blog post on the Analytics site. Okay, and now the last thing we want to do, if we've selected copy to another location, is we want to tell Excel, obviously, where that location is. So for us, it's going to be this cell here. And it's already pre-formatted because I deleted stuff um, that had been there. Okay, now you only have to select one of the, one of the cells. And if you don't specify anything in these cells, it's going to take the entire data range and copy it to the new location. Actually, there is a way where you can tell Excel, I only want certain columns from my data set, which can be especially helpful if you have a large data set. Uh, to do that, you would actually pre-populate exactly what columns you want to be filled by putting their headings in these cells here and then it will only bring over exactly what you specify. Okay, so one last thing, you can tell Excel unique records only. Uh, we're not going to do that because I know that these are already unique records. Now I'm just gonna hit okay. And now you can see that this advanced filter has spawned a whole new data set where the keywords have to include the word scene. And you can see it's smaller than the original data set that goes down to row 107. Okay, and then you can go ahead and format it as you want. So some of the keywords are spelled cleanup as two words, and some of them 
have it as one word, but I wanted to obviously combine them into one data set. So what I'm going to do here, I'll just type in a keyword. I feel reasonably confident that I can type that in. Uh, and next up, what we're going to do, as we did before, is we're just going to put in that single quotation mark and equal sign, and then we'll put in, whoops, put in the asterisk, and clean up, and then an asterisk. And we'll do that again underneath. So if you put something else in a cell underneath, that basically tells Excel that the keyword has to contain either clean up as one word or clean up as two words. If you wanted, no, obviously this wouldn't make any sense in this context, but if both conditions have to be met, then what you have to do is actually put keyword over here and put your second qualifier. So it wouldn't make sense to put clean up and clean up, but you could do something like um, it has to contain clean up and uh, the word seen. And then that's like saying and instead of or. We don't want to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear the contents. So in our case, we want basically an or filter. So we're just going to put in that single quotation mark again, equal sign, and then asterisk, and clean up with a space. And you might be thinking, well, hey, if the asterisk means there may or may not be uh, another character, then why not just use one and put the asterisk in there, which would tell Excel this will include clean up as one word or two words. However, and I found this out from experience, when I tried that, it also pulled in keywords that contained the word cleaning, which I didn't want. So that's just something to keep in mind. And also, uh, this is a quick diversion. If you want the filter to not include certain keywords, well, then you use the symbol in Excel that means not. Now, notice I don't have to put the single quotation mark in front of uh, the brackets because Excel doesn't interpret that, that as a formula. So I could put um, here... I could say, okay, well, I want it to include clean up or clean up, but not include crime. Okay, enough. All right, so now what we're going to do is go back into our keyword set. Remember, you always have to start inside the, the original data set. And we're going to go to filter, advanced filter. It's already selected our original data set, which you can see the marching ants, so that's fine. We're going to copy to an, another location, and the criteria range will now be all three of these cells. And we're going to copy to this cell here. And then click OK. And now you can see, once again, Excel has spawned off another data set from this original data set. Okay, so one last thing that I'll show is, and I'll use the example of uh, keywords that contain crime. So uh, talking about the AND filter, what we could do here is we could say, okay, I want keywords that contain the word crime and have a search volume of at least a thousand. So and my computer runs a little slowly when I have the video running here. But, um, but I know that the heading for that is search wall. Uh, but again, I could say equal and then point to that particular heading, but you'll see it over here, search wall. So here, what we're going to do is we're just going to have the greater than sign and put in a thousand. So now when we select all four of these cells as our criteria, it will only pull in keywords that contain the word crime and have a search volume of at least a thousand. So let's see it in action. Select here, go to filter, advanced filter, copy to another location. The list range is fine. 
for the criteria range. We're going to come over here, select these four cells, and we're going to copy to this location and click OK. And now what you see are keywords that contain the word crime and have a search volume of at least a thousand. If we took this out by going back in, oops, just a filter, advanced filter, copy in another location, and let's say for our criteria range, we just select these two cells. You'll see that, I'll just leave that the same, most likely that data set is going to be quite a bit larger because now we're not limited to keywords that just have a search volume of at least a thousand queries a month. So there you go. There are a few examples of some really powerful uses for advanced filters.